Hi, today I'm talking about the first major cowboy star, Tom Mix, who started in silent films in 1909. He died in 1940 at the age of 60. Tom Mix was an American silent movie star who appeared in Western films between the years of 1909 and 1935. He appeared in 291 movies. Other reports say it was over 300 movies, but all of them, apart from nine, were silent films. He became Hollywood's first major cowboy movie star. He was born Thomas Hezekiah Mix on the 6th of January 1880 in Mix Run in Pennsylvania to Edwin Elias Mix and Elizabeth Highstand. He never used his middle name as he disliked it and instead used his father's name, Edwin, as his middle name. He grew up in Du Bois, Pennsylvania. His father was a stable master for a wealthy lumber merchant, so horses featured heavily in his family life. When he was 18, he enlisted in the US Army in 1898 during the Spanish-American War, but apparently he never left the United States. In 1902, while he was on furlough from the army, he married his first wife, Grace Allen. He never returned to the army and was listed as AWOL or absent without leave, but somehow he got away with never being court-martialed. He moved to the state of Oklahoma and did a variety of jobs, such as bartender, labourer, he was a drummer in the Territorial Calvary Band, a ranch hand on the 101 Ranch, a night marshal, and he performed in the 101 Wild West show. His marriage ended, then in 1905 Tom married his second wife, Kitty Perrin. This was a short marriage as well, and they got divorced. In 1909 Tom married his third wife, Olive Stokes, who was part Cherokee Indian. They had a daughter in 1912 and named her Nadine Ruth Jane Mix. She was known as Ruth. Tom performed in different Wild West shows and was picked to appear in a movie for the Selig Polyscope Company called The Cowboy Millionaire in 1909. He carried on performing in more films for them. They were one reeler or two reeler shorts, so they weren't very long. A one reeler was between 10 and 12 minutes long and a two reeler was between 15 and 24 minutes long. Also, they were silent and black and white. It was a new thing and the general public loved them. Tom rode and performed stunts in these films. Tom started acting with Victoria Ford in some of his films and they became romantically involved. He divorced Olive in 1917. The film company was struggling financially, so Tom and Victoria got contracts with the Fox Film Corporation. They got married in 1918 and had a daughter, Thomasina, who was known as Tommy, in 1922. Tom was paid $350 a week when he first started working at Fox, but he became one of the highest paid film stars and earned over $17,000 a week. While working at Fox, he achieved worldwide fame. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average household earned $1,518 in 1918, and he was making over $17,000 a week. He started off making the short films with Fox and then graduated to making proper feature films as the public wanted to watch longer movies. He worked with Fox until 1928. Tom then signed with FBO, which was Film Booking Office Studios, which was owned by Joseph P. Kennedy, father of President John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. He later left the studios and got a contract with Universal. Tony the Wonder Horse was Tom's horse in many of his films. He bought him for $600. He became a celebrity in his own right. He was given equal billing as Tom, and when Tom placed his handprints and cowboy boot prints in cement outside Gorman's Chinese Theatre in 1927, Tony placed his hoof prints in the cement too. Tom taught him numerous tricks and stunts. He would chase trains, gallop into fire, untie Tom's hands, dance and jump through trick glass windows. Here is a photo from the 1924 movie Teeth. The actress is Lucy Fox, Duke is the dog, Tony the Wonder Horse and Tom. 
An interesting fact is that Tom became friends with historical real-life Wild West figure Wyatt Earp. Wyatt ended up living in Los Angeles and became an unpaid consultant on silent Western movies. Why was he unpaid? Tom was one of the pallbearers at Wyatt's funeral in 1929. This is a photo of Wyatt. It is dated as being in the 1870s. He was a good looking man, wasn't he? Tom worked in the cells Flotto Circus in 1929-1930 and 1931. The 1929 Wall Street crash and Tom's free spending had apparently reduced his savings dramatically. In 1931 his fourth marriage ended in divorce and in 1932 he married his fifth wife Mabel Hubble Ward pictured here. He made nine talkies with Universal Pictures. Destiny Rides Again, The Rider of Death Valley, the Texas Badman, My Pal the King, The Fourth Horseman, Hidden Gold, Terror Trail, Flaming Guns and Rustler's Roundup. All of these pictures have survived as well as the movie The Coens and Kellys in Hollywood, which has a cameo appearance by Tom. About 90% of Tom's movies went up in smoke when there was a warehouse fire in 1937. His last film project was a 15 episode serial called The Miracle Rider in 1935. According to Paul E. Mix, who wrote the book The Life and Legend of Tom Mix, Tom had made over $6 million, which is equivalent to $119 million in 2021 during his film career. On the morning of the 12th of October 1940, Tom had been visiting Pima County Sheriff Ed Eccles. He'd spent the night in Tucson at the Santa Rita Hotel. Apparently he invited some people to his suite for drinks. This gathering ended at 3am. He checked out of the hotel and left Tucson at 1pm. He was now working as an agent for a circus. He stopped off at a bar and saw his friend Bud White and had some drinks with him, then left just before 2pm. He was going to his grandson's christening the next day in Phoenix, Arizona. It was 2.12pm and Tom was speeding along a dirt road in his yellow 1937 Cord Phaeton convertible between Tucson and Phoenix on US Highway 80, which is now Highway 79. He was heading north towards Phoenix and was about 18 miles or 29 kilometres south of Florence. The bridge ahead of him had been washed away by a flash flood. Tom didn't see the problem ahead and so raced up to the construction barriers. He swerved hit the brakes and the car overturned into a dry creek bed. The spot has been named the Tom Mix Wash. When he hit the brakes, a large aluminium suitcase containing jewels, money, traveller's checks, which was on the package shelf behind his head, was thrown forward. It hit him and broke his neck. It was assumed he would have survived the crash if it hadn't been for this heavy suitcase. Two highway workers, John Adams and E.A. Our mentor found the overturned vehicle. Martin Yonkers and Anthony Monts helped pull Tom's body from the car. Tom had passed them on the road. There is a roadside memorial near to the crash site with a metal silhouette of a riderless horse with a plaque that reads, in memory of Tom Mix whose spirit left his body on this spot and whose characterization and portrayals in life served to better fix memories of the Old West in the minds of living men. Tom was buried in the Whispering Pines section, lot 1030, single ground interment space 8, in Forest Lawn Memorial Park, Glendale, Los Angeles, California. I'll put a link in the description box so you can view his grave photo, as there aren't any copyright free photos of it. Tom had a 17 acre ranch at Canterbury Avenue and Osborne Street in the area now known as Arletta in Los Angeles. Tony the Wonder Horse retired there in 1932 when he was 22 years old. Exactly two years after Tom's death on the 12th of October 1942, Tony was put to sleep by a vet when he was 32. He was buried on Tom's ranch 
without a grave marker. A Tom Mix Museum was established in 1965 in Dewey, Oklahoma. Tom lived and worked in Dewey before he was famous. Also, Olive Stokes, his third wife, lived there and his daughter Ruth was born there. Tom appears on the cover of the Beatles 1967 album Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oh, that was awful, wasn't it? If it hadn't been for the suitcase, who would have survived the car crash? If you like these videos, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.